Hi everyone, uh, my name is Olga Kravchenko and I was born and raised in Kiev in Ukraine. I moved to the UK around 12 years ago. Today I am CEO and co-founder of Museemia. Museemia is an innovative VR edtech platform dedicated to immersing children in virtual environments and providing experiential education and entertainment through our interactive games. Museemia prioritizes safety and incorporates pedagogical best practices which are informed by primary research conducted with the Institute of Education. But today I will tell you more about my own journey as a founder who had to lead no matter what was on the cards. My CTO said to me a few days ago, do not give in to the reality, but remain a realist at any given time. And I think this summarizes pretty neatly my entire experience as an entrepreneur. Stay visionary and continue innovating, despite only 2% of all funding going to female entrepreneurs. Build serious business and negotiate, despite being labeled young and having a comment on the ages of your team. Lead the team and build groundbreaking technologies, despite your country being bombed and your technical team learning how to survive and continue innovating despite all odds. While we all face challenges on a daily basis, on 24th of February 2022, the world stopped for me and my team, as well as for every single Ukrainian out there. And despite the grim reality of us not knowing when war is going to end, we continue our daily fights. For me, my individual fund is about promoting empathy and making the world a better place in everything that I do. It starts with leading with empathy. Later, I will also speak about building with empathy and passing empathy to others. When something like war happens, there is no right or wrong answer for you individually. Fleeing, staying, screaming, crying, or even doing nothing is all the right response. But when you run the company and war starts at night, nothing matters but your people. When the war started, I had no idea what to do, apart from messaging my team and making sure they were okay. I knew that stand-up call was not on the cards that day. My CTO, being based in Kiev, just told me to email our clients and ask them for one week extension, as he was worried about internet connection. And he said that my role, being in safety, being in the UK, is to make sure that there is a company to work for when the war ends. So I listened and I went to my planned meeting and then I wrote a LinkedIn post asking people to empathize and to show empathy to their Ukrainian employees. The message spread widely and within hours, I received hundreds of messages offering help ranging from humanitarian aid to offers of accommodation in Slovakia or Hungary and even logistic companies willing to bring the supplies close to the border. While I couldn't run my company for a couple of days as my entire team were literally trying to figure out their immediate futures, together with my other employer who was based in Spain, we ended up forming a resource hub for fleeing Ukrainians and a directory of help. At Museemia, we have developed an immersive learning platform for children's media, and we design our experiences user-led, using adapted version of design thinking. Who knew that design thinking would be the same method we would be using to make our resources work best for the Ukrainian refugees and solve the real needs that people are facing, lack of information and direction. After a week, my team asked me for a stand-up. It was unfortunately too late for them to flee as martial law was already in place. But for us as a company, it was time to reassess, adjust and have a new plan in action. While design thinking works equally well for building immersive games for children and creating a resource hub for refugees, turn out that the agile principles work well even in the deepest crisis situation. We only now had to account for a few additional circumstances, like electricity cuts, connection drops, personal lives havoc, 
and the internal need to actually help other people. We delivered the first project and we had a few weeks gap. The knee-jerk reaction to help in any shape or form has come to a logical end as there were infrastructures being built to support Ukrainian communities all over the world. And as a company, we knew that we can help other way. At Museumia, we know through our core research that the key value of immersive experiences are to increase attention, engagement, and retention of knowledge. So we knew that we had to leverage our immersive storytelling expertise to bring Ukraine's struggle to life. As a small team, we went on a mission to build the first immersive experience to help Ukrainian fundraising efforts. Hello, my name is Sonia Schnick. My family calls me Sonia. And since then, there's always sirens. They go off when there is danger. I hate it. I'm tired of it. Everyone is always shouting, everyone is always scared. I just want to switch it off. Now I've been hungry a lot this year. I don't remember being hungry before. I hope that one day it will be over and the sirens will stop. My name was Sonjashnik. It means sunflower. The creatives took control of visuals and developers started experimenting with different platforms to make the experience as accessible as possible. I took care of the story and filled the gaps that would allow us to actually make the project really impactful. We had a call out to the beautiful community of creatives and we had help from amazing storytellers, music composers, director, voice actress, additional technical companies from all over Europe and UK. And we managed to build something that made hundreds of people cry. We have built the experience that brought war into people's living room through the eyes of a young girl named Sonja Schnick. Sunflower was an immersive web AR experience created to cut through news fatigue about horrors happening in Ukraine. It used the power of smartphones and augmented reality to touch people's hearts and souls. The experience reached thousands of people, bringing the story of Ukraine and supporting Ukrainian fundraising efforts. While leading with empathy helps to create bonds and overcome circumstances, building with empathy makes people listen. Museumia built partnerships with the best institutions in the world, including the London Transport Museum, Royal Museum of Greenwich, Crisis Charity and others. We have new partnerships coming up in publishing and children's entertainment, where storytelling is so key to engaging young minds. And all of our partners had one big thing in common. They wanted to tell a story that people need to be able to relate to whatever their actual circumstances are. Applying the basic principles of user-centered design helped us to create a unique approach to telling these stories was that we are helping a nine-year-old to understand homelessness without stigma, creating a connection with a little girl who lived in a bomb shelter during the Second World War, or getting people to hear the story of how the normality was destroyed in one single day for the generation of Ukrainian children. The future of design for immersive technologies is the same as the future of the current world. It lies in empathy. Virtual reality is often called an empathy machine, and it is for its ability to alter the ingrained perspectives and unconscious biases. I lead with empathy, and my company designs with empathy, and we are trying to see how we can teach the rest of creators to opt in for building with the same sentiment in mind. While still early days, Museumia has created a tool for anyone to design impactful immersive experiences for young people using our own research and methodology. So while leading with empathy is paramount in any situation, designing with empathy in mind is still something most organizations are yet to learn. The current circumstances might not be optimum dream landscape for entrepreneurs to foster innovation and continue to thrive. 
but I refuse to give in to the reality.